Hello, my name is John Doyle from the ExcelCounts.com website. I'd like to just speak uh, briefly about a two-day course we run for engineers to help them design welded structures that will last a lifetime of service. The objective of our course is to make sure that all attendees can understand the AWS rules for fatigue design. Now, we use spreadsheets all the time uh, to make calculations simple. And in fact, what this calculation is showing is that the detail under consideration is detail 3.1, which I select using this selector here, and which is, which, which is detailed out below here. And all the factors uh, regarding this uh, stress category B are automatically filled in. We know that we're, we need the design to last 200,000 cycles and we have an applied stress range of 25 KSI. So this is automatically plotted on an SN uh, diagram. And it shows us that our 25 uh, KSI applied is less than the allowable uh, stress for 200,000 cycles because that reads off at 39 KSI. In fact, we know that if we have a stress range of 25 KSI, it's in fact good for 760,000 cycles of load. Now, it's not a very simple job to, do, to assign uh, stress categories. Uh, and in fact, if we, if we choose another one, and we'll, we'll, we'll choose this detail here, uh, which is 3.4, and it's a class E detail, we'll see what happens if we change. So we go to 3.4. Class E. Now the SN diagram has changed because these values here have been automatically looked up and what we can see now is that for our uh, 200,000 cycles we require uh, or we, we have applied uh, 25 KSI but in fact the design is only good for 17.6 megapascals or alternatively you could say it's going to fail after 69,000 cycles. So clearly, uh, this detail, if this welded detail was selected, it's not going to be very useful to us. Now, using this spreadsheet, it very it simplifies exactly what, what happens because the use of these charts is very subjective. There's many, many to choose from, and you need to have a very good understanding of fatigue to make sure that you select the correct detail and uh, invoke the correct rule to make the correct interpretation regarding the fatigue life. Now we'll not only be using AWS, but we'll be using the AISC rules as well. Uh, and there's some LRFD rules and there's also, also some ASD rules. Uh, and there'll be other uh, similar codes that use exactly the same principles and it's quite useful to go through those as well in order to understand the, the fatigue details and how to apply them. What we found is that most attendees struggle with understanding the conventional fatigue approach, which they may have some understanding of from their college days, and then the fatigue of welded structures. So classically, the problems that attendees have are uh, what kind of, what stress do I apply? Should it be the maximum stress, a stress range? Is the material UTS important? Is the mean stress important? Do I include a stress concentration factor? Do I include a notch sensitivity factor? What's the probability of survival? And how do I include the weld residual stress? So certainly we're going to be touching on some weld terminology uh, to work our way through these common confusions. We're going to be learning about what makes uh, weld material so special and so susceptible to fatigue and why we have special rules because there are special characteristics of welds uh, that require special rules. But mainly, we'll be making sure that we can spot a good welded detail from a bad welded detail so that when we design our welded structures, they won't suffer from fatigue failures. Now I'll be running the course and I have a lot of experience in understanding fatigue problems in various industries.
And in fact, if you take a look at our course syllabus, you'll find that every single element of learning is associated with the case studies. Because I think as, as practical working engineers, uh, it's different to uh, when we were students uh, and we need to learn uh, through real life application, uh, I think, rather than making this an academic study. Uh, this, this course is not about an academic study. It's, it's about applying these design rules uh, safely and effectively to our designs. And I think it's always good to put that in the context of real life products. So we're going to use spreadsheets from the Excel Calcs website uh, to make the math simple and so that we can concentrate on understanding concepts to make sure that we can apply the AWS rules with insight uh, and in a correct fashion. Uh, here's a few uh, examples of what we'll be looking at. Uh, this is a fatigue calculation of an unwelded um, uh, an unwelded sample and to really contrast the difference between what we do with welded and unwelded uh, steel uh, fatigue samples. Uh, we'll even do some really quite uh, difficult calculations uh, regarding fracture mechanics uh, because I think we'd, we're doing this not to understand the, the maths of fracture mechanics which can get very involved, we're doing this to understand why a crack grows uh, and why it becomes design dangerous and how we can understand things like fracture surfaces uh, uh, but the real goal is to just get together whole, a whole background of fatigue knowledge to make sure that we apply those AWS rules correctly. So what makes our approach unique and in fact this applies to all the courses available from the Excel Counts website is that we'll take complex mathematics and we'll make sure that you understand the concepts through simple Excel workbooks and charts. We'll always use our XLC software so that the calculation method is transparent and easily readable. And of course, at the end of the course, you'll have continued access to all the site resources, an expert community, and of course, the course leader. So I do hope you'll take this opportunity to uh, take a closer look at some of our uh, course offerings. Thank you very much for listening.